Got another one? Yeah. Thank you. It's hard to, oh, this is a nice one, dude. That's a nice fish. Oh, man. Woo! That's a good way to start it. Yeah, it is. Awesome. Oh, battery's gonna die, but it's a good way to start the video today, Jeff. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we're in, uh, we're in some cold weather right now. The last video, I was in Lake Hamilton, Arkansas. It was like 95 degrees. Today, it's in the mid-30s, and we're catching slabs. <laughs> Fall crop. All right, so battery died. But uh, yeah, we're on some nice fall crappie right now. Set up on the brush pile that is in soft bottom. I'm with Jeremy here. He's a subscriber. He DM'd me on Instagram. Hey, so let's come out and fish. One of the lakes I normally fish, and I actually caught a ton of small fish on this lake this summer. Uh, but this is the time of year if you want to catch some bigger fish this is the time they bite spring and fall water temps just took a plummet over the past week we had a huge cold front move in water temps right now 50.97 it's not even 51 degrees i think the last time i fished this it was like mid 70 water temp which was last month and but uh, five days ago it was 56 on the, wa the water right side of that. yeah so we had a huge cold front come through we're fishing lipless crankbaits these z vibers by euro tackle Probably one of my two favorite fall fishing lures. It's either the lipless crankbait style or the jig and wrap. What do you got on here? The bluegill style? Here, bluegill, you can see yeah. that. So he's got the uh, bluegill style bait. Ah. Come on, buddy. Focus. Yeah, he's got the bluegill style. I'm using an all white. I think it's a glow. Yep, I'm pretty glow. sure it's a glow style bait. Whew, it's cold out. It's cold out this morning. But we're going to set up on these brush piles right here. Where are we? There they are. Right off the edge of one right here. And then there's some crappie stacked up. Whoops. Right off the edge. There's some suspended there too. But basically, this the way that we found these brush piles to fish, whew, pardon the little sniffles here, yeah. is all these brush piles are set up in soft bottom and we actually came over this point and I'll show you we'll run back over it on the side imaging there's a transition between hard bottom and soft bottom you can see it on 2d sonar down imaging side imaging and there's brush piles on the hard bottom which is a, a brighter image on your side imaging and there's no fish on them all these brush piles on the soft bottom that's where the fish are holding and uh, honestly they're pretty much holding all throughout the soft bottom Kind of basin area or this kind of ledge in that leads into the basin um, we were catching fish in just open water so i wanted to try to find some brush piles that had fish on soft bottom and that's what we did and he just put, put a really nice crop in the boat is just shy of 12 so all right nice one going there back. is the 12 inch crappie going back let it go let it grow see you buddy get down to the depths He's got to close his mouth first. There he goes. See you, big guy. All right. So what we're, all we're doing is flicking out our little Z-Vibers here and kind of just letting it propel back or repel back to the boat. And uh, hope you, one's on you. There's a bunch. Uh, Try to get it on camera. <laughs> uh, sorry. Right there. They're right on this left edge. They're right there. There's his thing dropping down, popping up. Here comes a fish. Fire we're far away now. I think they're out a little further. Where are you? They're right there. Hooked up. He's a dink though. Yeah, got it. Man, this is fun. This one's not, not too bad. That one goes in the box. Yeah. That's a nice fish. They're mixed in, catching 12 inch, catching 8 inch, and that's probably like a that might be about a 10, just shy. Put it in. Hmm? 
Oh, oh, there might be two brush piles there. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that was a terrible throw of that buoy. That was awful. It wasn't even close. There he is. Might be a little bit better. They spin on you, so it, yeah, it's hard to tell. Yep. Well, he's catching the big ones. I'm catching the dinks here. Typical. Get him? Yeah. Should just film you, put, put my GoPro down and just <laughs> film you catching fish. You got the right color. That blue girl pattern yeah. seems to be it. I might have to switch up to that. You have it? I'm, I might. I don't know. I'll have to look. Well, yeah, we're kind of spinning. So, brushes, yeah, it's right in front of us. Well, that might have been a little far. Well, it'll come back. Yeah. Maybe not. Get them? Just hammering them with that bluegill pattern. Easy release. He's a little guy. guy. Only two other boats on the lake. It's pretty nice. I was not ready for that upset. I thought it was a decent one too, just the way it looked in the water, but... I'm actually surprised they're not over there. Oh, there is a boat over there. Because there's a big reef that sticks out from that point, and then there's like a deeper saddle where a bunch of brush piles are, and then there's a mid-lake hump kind of closer to us okay. with a bunch of weeds, and usually that's like the last weeds that die. Okay. And there's usually a bunch, so of, just a bunch of fish, and like, like walleye like bass. Green weed in, uh, yeah. Lake. That's a nice black crappie. I mean, it's small, but the colors on it are just amazing yeah. right now. Well, Jeremy's out fishing me today. That's another, what is that? That's probably close to 11. Yeah. It's a nice fish. Using the uh, the bluegill style Z-Viber. I'm using the white. It's not, not working out so well for me. I'm gonna probably switch it up to either the bluegill style or, or the perch style. I'm trying to match the hatch here. There's a lot of perch in this lake too, so. But yeah, we've been set up on the same brush pile for probably half hour now. We've just been ripping them left and right. Some, some some bigger ones like that mixed in, a lot of them in that seven to nine inch range, but every once in a while he pulls out a bigger fish. So we're gonna keep fishing this until basically they stop biting, then we're gonna move out of the wind, try a couple different brush piles. Uh, we're actually in 26 feet of water, which is pretty deep. Uh, this is probably the deepest I really wanna fish crappie and catch and release them. Um, yeah. at, at about the 25, 30 foot mark, yeah, it, the mortality rate starts to go up, so you probably don't want to release them after about 30 feet if you're catching them deeper than 30 feet. So I'm probably going to tie on a different one here, and I'll show you a little bit on the live scope and hopefully put some more fish in the boat that size. So you get him. There he is, right there. Oh, he choked it again. I'm showing that. They are just, they're hungry. Two of them in the, ba in the bag and there we go. You know, if the wind would calm down, this would be a really nice day. It's like it said, there's just a chill with that wind. You let me know if you want to move at any time. I guarantee if they're fish on this brush pile, there's gonna be fish on those brush piles. It's shallower, but it's soft bottom and it's a little protected. And the the tool will be spawn right in that bay too during the winter time during ice fishing. So oh, okay. there could be an early spawn of some other stuff. Yeah. Well, that because there's so many crappie in this lake. Yeah. I've caught I've caught I think three musky while I hooked into crappie and they come they come up and hit it no on the way up. Way. Yeah. On this lake. No, I mean they let go when I get to the okay. boat. But I got them to the boat. Really? And then, Did you film it? 
I think I got one of them on film. You don't need to get the new clothes. Who gets the bat? Who gets the bat? The Joker and the Perch. And the... Mm-hmm. Another one just, on the blue guy. Just hammering them. That's why I'm switching up right now to that same exact pattern. These are one. What are these? One sixteenth. Yeah. Or no, these are one eighth ounce. Oh yeah, one eighth. One eighth ounce. One point six inches. Uh, you've caught quite a few. Okay. <laughs> Probably more than that. Summertime, they'll be on the shallower um, weed lines. Well, on this lake, they'll be in the shallower brush piles still. Oh, like, depend. By shallow, like, they'll, there's. So, we see that buoy there? Yeah. yeah. There's brush piles in seven, eight feet of water. Okay. So, oh, and then they're stacked up from seven, eight feet all the way down to 25. In the uh, summertime? Well, no, the, I mean, the brush piles are set. Oh, this, the brush piles okay. are set. So, you can kind of. I mean, on this point, you could transition all the way from summer fishing too there you go no that's a that's probably a live well fish that's a it's probably a nine and a half inch live well fish there you go they usually do that in this boat flop around 10 inch but like post spawn is probably my favorite time to fish a lot of these lakes because everybody's done june like early june yeah early to mid june depending on the lake and how far north you go uh, because they're usually they're usually are done, yeah, they're done crappie fishing because they're they're fished them all through the spring and through the slip bobbers up there and really yeah. shallow. But yeah. post spawn they'll push out to that six to eight feet, okay. right on that first edge of weeds, yeah. and you just cast like little um, feather jigs or uh, crank like the micro crankbaits, okay. the big build, mm -hmm. like a five or six foot square build type of thing. Okay, and they'll crush it. Yeah, because you you just get tired of I don't know like. When I go down to the southern states, a lot of them fish the buck brush, so you're just vertically jigging it, but uh -huh. it's only in two feet of water type of thing. You're vertically jigging two feet of water? Well, because the buck brush will stand out of the water. So it's the, what, the two, so feet, you're re two feet above the buck brush? There's well, it's, a, you're, it's only in two feet of water, but oh. you got to like put it straight down because you can't cast it because there's so much mangled It'll stuff. Just get caught. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people do that in the southern states where they can, but. And then the, the slip doing, bobber's pretty you're cool. Doing, you're doing this a lot. Then. Yeah, in the spawning season. Yeah. Up here, obviously, the slip bobber thing, or the little bobber with the little jig and plastic, at, you know, foot foot down, okay. cast in the shorelines where they're bedding. And oh, yeah. We're gonna head to a different spot, but before we do, I do wanna show you exactly what it looks like on side imaging. Being between hard and soft bottom and what we were seeing. Anyway, so there's the, uh, oh. There's the brush piles off to our right. And those, those are brush piles in this darker area, which is the soft bottom that we're looking at. We're gonna go back over. I'll show you the hard bottom. The soft, the, bot, the brush piles in these soft bottom areas is where we found these fish. Apologies for that sun glare. I know it's not the best. There's another brush pile coming up right there. Some fish on it all over the place and here comes the harder bottom so that's this is where it starts the mixture of hard bottom to soft bottom if you don't have brush piles this is probably where we're gonna they're gonna stack up so here's some brush piles on the hard bottom now if you notice there's no fish on those it's completely empty completely empty but as we kind of get off the hard bottom here we should start seeing these fish kind of scattered out onto the softer areas, this mud silt type of area. There's a brush pile right here. Starting to get into that softer bottom. There's, there's a brush pile with a ton of fish on it. Off to our left. Yeah, that, that's all fish right there off to the left of that brush pile. So that's what we've been trying to do, is just trying to find those brush piles on that softer bottom. That's where these fish are kind of stacking up. This type of lake, these natural lakes, they are, they're gonna push off into the wintering basins here probably in the next couple months. Um, and then we'll start ice fishing for them out there. Uh, we're gonna run to a different section of brush piles, hopefully get out of this little bit of wind. It's just, it's just cold enough where the wind, ugh, it's a little bit of a chill. So we're gonna make a little run. Oh, well, that might've been a brush.
There's some fish. Got him. Got him. Good one? Little guy? There he is. Oh, there's a bunch of fish here down here now. Yep, there they are. Uh, buoy. They're right below the boat. Right below the boat. Is your thing looking that way now? Oh, it's looking back at the buoy. It is? The live scope is? Yeah. Oh. I think the, the brush pile's right underneath the boat because it's looking 10 feet back behind the boat, which is that way. But I think we're pretty much right underneath it. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Last, last three I've uh, failed. See you, buddy. I think. Yep. Yeah, that's you. Oh my gosh. Look at him. Hit him. Get him. No. You miss it? I missed. I got. I should probably be feeling on the first one that's in there. Okay. I saw them both. They're going to move. Yeah, I got him. I got him. a decent one. They always look so bit, so much bigger in the water when they're about to come out. Oh, I missed him. There he is. Try on the right side of this buoy. Drop it straight down, straight back down. He's right, right below the boat. Oh, is it right there? Did you? Not a big one, but that'll work. <laughs> nice fall crappie. See you, buddy. See you, buddy. So that is going to wrap it up. I'm actually going to talk through our setups today. The Z Viber, Z Viber. It's cold. I can't even talk. Um, has been. Absolutely phenomenal. He's caught the two biggest, of course. <laughs> so I'm gonna he's, I'm gonna give him the camera here, and I'm gonna walk through our setup. This Z Viber. These are the one eighth ounce. This is the Z Viber bluegill pattern. That's what we were using today. I started off with the white. He was crushing them with this pattern, so I switched up with this. Um, we were both using. I'm using the seven and a half foot. He was using a seven foot rod. Once you start getting over that eight foot, these are kind of tougher baits to manage. I actually started off with a 10 foot rear seat today and just, it's not really necessary for this type of fishing. That seven to eight foot, you probably get down to that six to six and a half foot if you wanted to. We weren't really casting these out. We were pitching them away from the boat as you guys saw, but uh, just ripping them right above these brush piles. These crappie are stacking up on that transition line between hard bottom and soft bottom. We're finding these brush piles that are in the soft bottom. We're actually gonna try doing some walleye fishing. We saw some walleye on the side imaging. Um, so hopefully we can run them down with the live scope here, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. 
check out eurotackle.net check out these z vibers uh, these are the 1.6 inch uh, z vibers the 1 8 ounce lipless crankbaits jig and wraps these are probably my two one of my two favorite baits to use during this time of year uh, we're actually going to try to find some wall. I appreciate you watching as always. If you got comments or questions, post them in the comment section below. If it's urgent, go ahead, send me a message on your Facebook or Instagram. And as always, if you're new here, click that subscribe button, click that bell. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you.